In the personal story segment tonight, Donald Trump's pick for Secretary of Defense. Last night at his rally in Cincinnati, the president-elect put his showmanship on display by making a surprise early announcement. We are going to appoint Mad Dog Mattis as our Secretary of Defense. But we're not announcing it till Monday, so don't tell anybody. General James Mattis served in the Marine Corps for more than four decades and has a reputation as a general's general. But is he the right choice to run the Pentagon? Joining us now from Little Rock, Arkansas, General Wesley Clark, former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. And from Miami, Ambassador Nancy Soderberg, former Deputy National Security Advisor for President Clinton. So... Ambassador Soderberg, is James Mattis the right person to be Secretary of Defense? Well, the president-elect has the right to choose anyone he wants, and there's no better general's general than, uh, than Mattis, who has served our country with enormous distinction. But I think the question is, you have to look at this as a whole team. Uh, he's got uh, basically filling a, uh, like a football team full of linebackers, but you've got a general at now in the National Security Council and at the Pentagon, and none of them have the deep policy experience that Donald Trump is going to need. So we have to see how the whole team balances out, but there's lots of questions about whether he's getting the right team around him, notwithstanding the great service that Mattis has done to this country. General Clark, I want to pick up on that, because there's no question that if you were the commander-in-chief and you needed somebody to seize that beachhead, that James Mattis is the guy you would choose, but is he the kind of strategic thinker to give the president the best advice when it comes to world affairs and perhaps just as importantly to, to think about the kind of military that we need to face the threats of the 21st century. Well, I think uh, Jim Mattis is an outstanding choice. I'll tell you why. First, I do think he is a strategic thinker. Uh, he does see the big picture. He's well aware of Russia and the problems of Russia. And and the president-elect Trump needs someone like that who can really understand the big picture. Uh, in his recent testimony, he called for a national strategy, and, and so it's more than the Middle East. But he is experienced in dealing with uh, policies at the, uh, at the combatant <coughs> command level and executing those policies, and you need somebody who can work policies all the way down to the execution level. I do agree with what Nancy Soderbergh says about needing policy expertise, but that policy expertise comes in staff members at the National Security Council staff and also at the Pentagon. Uh, the challenge for General Mattis is to take his big picture view and make sure that all the uh, uh, periods and commas and colons in the, in the policy papers support that big view. Uh, Ambassador, let me bring you in. Your, your response to that, particularly in this question of reforming the Pentagon, creating the kind of military we need for the 21st century. Does Mattis have the credentials to do that? And specifically on this issue of the waiver, because Congress is going to have to pass a waiver since he hasn't been out of the military for seven years. Do you envision any problem in Congress doing that and Mattis getting through? Uh, three points. On the first one, I think Mattis certainly knows the Pentagon inside and out. You want somebody who knows how to make those decisions. He's got that down. Um, on the question of the waiver, I think he'll get this waiver. Donald Trump controls both houses of Congress. He's got the clear majority in the Senate. He may need to get a supermajority to get the waiver through. But on balance, um, people are going to have a problem with his uh, four years versus seven years out of the military. But they're going to give the president um, the team he wants. That's his right, and that's what you get when you win the election. I think the bigger question is what kind of team is Donald Trump building? It's very odd to pick your, your uh, UN ambassador before you've picked your Secretary of State. We, we have two generals in the mix here, and we still don't know who Secretary of State is going to be. General Petraeus is in the short list by all accounts. Um, and so you could have three generals in the key three posts here. My concern, and I think every, all Americans want Donald Trump to succeed as a policymaker, is we've got huge issues coming on here. And these are some of the tough problems. You've got cyber, you've got ISIS, you've got Libya, you've got Syria, you've got right. trade issues, the broad issues. And he, he needs people at the very top who've really been in that seat making those policy decisions. So I hope he brings on someone 
as the deputies to these uh, men and also as, as Secretary of State who's got that deep, someone like a Stephen Hadley who served with George Bush. Um, and it's odd, and no. this process is nothing but odd, but you usually would look at your team on balance before you announce pieces of it. So we'll see how it works out when it's all announced. Are, are, are you troubled at all by that, uh, General Clark, the idea that this is being done piecemeal and that the Secretary of State seems the, to be the last piece of the puzzle? And between Mike Flynn, retired general, who's going to be national security advisor, and uh, General Mattis, you've got two guys who are really tough and, uh, about Iran. Uh, I, are we sending a message to Tehran in all of this? I hope we are sending a message to Tehran. And, um, of course, Mike Flynn is a spark plug. I mean, he's got a lot of uh, energy. He wants to get things done. He's in a very difficult position in that National Security Council position, as uh, Nancy Soderbergh was saying, because that really is uh, all about policy, treaties, laws. Uh, you've got to read the fine print, and you've got to somehow do it in a way that serves the president. Um, I think you've uh, got to get good, strong, uh, second supporting players in those positions. As far as the announcement is concerned, Chris, I, you know, Donald Trump's shown he really knows how to handle the media and public opinion, and uh, his announcement for uh, Jim Mattis yesterday in, in, in Cincinnati was, it was masterful the way he did it. Now, Mattis has a lot of, uh, he's got a lot of power inside the Republican Party. He's well known. Uh, he was a strong pick. And uh, so there's a message in the way this is being released. I, I suspect Trump uh, is not releasing the names in the order that he knows them, but he's releasing them sort of from the bottom up as he's building the suspense and building the support and <laughs> I, I, that, this is showmanship. Well, if it's showmanship, it's pretty good showmanship because he's gotten the nation's attention. General Clark, Ambassador Soderbergh, thank you both so much tonight. My pleasure. Joining us now with reaction, Delaware Democratic Senator Chris Coons. Let's start with those comments from Congressman Gutierrez. First of all, do you think that's appropriate? Do you think many Democrats will boycott Trump's inauguration? And will you? Well, Chris, I'm planning to go to the inauguration. Uh, I think uh, regardless of how you feel about uh, the election or who won, uh, we owe it to our nation and to the world uh, to show that we're going to participate in the orderly, peaceful, regular transition of power that has happened every four years throughout the entire history of our republic. Uh, I think this is an important moment uh, for us to show uh, our country and the world uh, that democracy works, uh, that we embrace the outcome of the election and the chance to work together across the aisle. I choose to follow what I think has been the example of both President-elect Trump uh, in his victory speech on the night of the election and then President Obama and Secretary Clinton in saying uh, we all look for President-elect Trump to be successful. Well, I applaud you for your consistency, but not all of your uh, fellow Democrats are being so consistent. And, you know, and I remember I was the moderator of the third debate and I asked Mr. Trump, whether he would recognize the results of the election, he said, I'm going to keep you in suspense. Hillary Clinton said that was horrifying. People, Democrats, liberals, uh, said they were horrified about uh, the, citing the principle of the peaceful transfer of power. Now, though, that it's Trump who's the president, not all of them are sticking to that principle. Well, I think what concerned folks uh, in that debate with that, I'll keep you in suspense, was the possibility that Trump, if he were unsuccessful in the election, uh, would contest it, not through legal orderly means, but would refuse to accept it. But now you've got the Green Party calling for recounts in three states, the Clinton campaign mm -hmm. saying they're going to participate. Isn't this hypocrisy? Um, well, I think what's different there, what's distinguishable, uh, is that Jill Stein, who's the presidential candidate of the Green Party, let's right. be clear, um, is following a legal process uh, to file uh, contests against uh, those three states' elections and asking for a recount. That's quite different from saying you refuse to accept the outcome. Speaking for myself, um, I accept the outcome of the election. Um, I think it's clear that Secretary Clinton won the popular vote and that Donald Trump won the electoral uh, college, and he's going to be our next president, uh, and I think we need to move forward past this election. What do you think of moving forward? What do you think of the Trump agenda as he's laid it out so far, especially at that carrier event yesterday in Indiana on this issue of really being tough on companies leaving the United States? Well, there's been some criticism of that. I think the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal said from a sort of a, a conservative economic policy perspective uh, that they don't want the president jawboning specific companies. Uh, but I'll tell you, if, if I had family that were working at that carrier plant, I'd be pleased uh, that their jobs were for now saved. Um, what I'd like to see is us coming up with a, a, a concrete bipartisan agenda uh, for strengthening manufacturing in the United States. 
And if we focus on uh, improving infrastructure and improving the skills of our workforce and uh, making our country a more attractive place for investment, I think there's a chance we can grow manufacturing employment. In this One country. more issue. What do you think of the choice of retired General James Mattis for Secretary of Defense? Will you vote to give him the waiver because he has not been out of the military for seven years? Will you vote to confirm? Well, I was very encouraged uh, by his nomination. I've talked to a number of friends who are Marine Corps veterans who know him from service uh, and who've said very positive things about him as someone uh, who reads a great deal, uh, who served more than four decades in the Marine Corps and has uh, personal experience uh, both as a combat commander uh, in Afghanistan and in Iraq uh, and is knowledgeable about the challenges and, that we face in the world. And real quick, you have a problem giving him the waiver? Um, I understand some of my colleagues are raising a question about uh, civilian control of the military. It's been more than 50 years since we've given such a waiver. I'll consider it. Um, but I think it's important uh, that President-elect Trump surround himself with a national security team with the kind of experience uh, and character and um, success in the battlefield uh, that General Mattis has demonstrated. Senator Coons, thank you. Always good to talk with you, sir. Great to be with you.